March 14, 2023 Tuesday of the third week of Lent Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times but seventy-seven times. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We owe a very great deal to the fact that Peter had a quick tongue. Again and again, he rushed into speech in such a way that his impetuosity drew from Jesus' teaching which is immortal. On this occasion, Peter thought that he was being very generous. He asked Jesus how often he ought to forgive his brother and then answered his own question by suggesting that he should forgive seven times. Peter was not without warrant for this suggestion. It was rabbinic teaching that a man must forgive his brother three times. Rabbi Jose ben Hanina said, He who begs forgiveness from his neighbor must not do so more than three times. Rabbi Jose ben Jehuda said, If a man commits an offense once, they forgive him, if he commits an offense a second time, they forgive him, if he commits an offense a third time, they forgive him the fourth time they do not forgive. The biblical proof that this was correct was taken from Amos. In the opening chapters of Amos there is a series of condemnations on the various nations for three transgressions and for four, Amos.1.3.6.9, Amos.1.11.13, Amos.2.1.4.6. From this, it was deduced that God's forgiveness extends to three offenses and that he visits the sinner with punishment at the fourth. It was not to be thought that a man could be more gracious than God, so forgiveness was limited to three times. Peter thought that he was going very far, for he takes the rabbinic three times, multiplies it by two for good measure adds one, and suggests, with eager self-satisfaction, that it will be enough if he forgives seven times. Peter expected to be warmly commended, but Jesus' answer was that the Christian must forgive seventy times seven. In other words there is no reckonable limit to forgiveness. Jesus then told the story of the servant forgiven a great debt who went out and dealt mercilessly with a fellow servant who owed him a debt that was an infinitesimal fraction of what he himself had owed and who for his mercilessness was utterly condemned. The parable of the unforgiving servant presents two contrasting characters. 1. God who forgives mercifully. 2. Man who unforgives mercilessly. The servant was forgiven a huge debt by the king who while. He in his turn refuses to forgive the small debt of his fellow servant. From the king, he sought mercy, to pay the debt later, and from his fellow servant he demanded justice, to pay the debt immediately. This is precisely what we do. In our relationship with God, for our sins, we seek his mercy countlessly and in our relationship with others we count their sins mercilessly. Our sins, we want God to let go and other sins we wish to hold on. When God can forgive my one hundred sins how can I not forgive others one sin? Let's not forget, Lord does well to us so that we might do good to others. He forgives us to that having experienced his forgiveness we might learn to forgive others. The servant did not ask to cancel his debts instead he pleads to give him some more time to pay off his debts but the king out of compassion cancels all his debts. This speaks of God's large heart that forgives our sins gratuitously and abundantly. On the contrary, the fellow servant pleads to grant him an extension of days but this servant behaves rudely and puts him in the prison. This speaks of man's hard heart that refuses to forgive and thus turns out to be rigid and arrogant. We cannot only receive forgiveness, we must also be imparting it. At times we find it so easy to go to the Lord in confession but find it difficult to share the same forgiveness with others outside the confession. When God forgives us our huge debt of sins why can't we forgive others their small debt of sins? This is illogical, 
to seek mercy for oneself and punishment for others. Let's never forget the simple fact, forgiveness received is forgiveness to be shared. Forgiveness is a bomb that heals the one who forgives, while non-forgiveness is a poison that kills the one who refuses to forgive.